Being the last person before the bar opens, uh, I will bear that in mind and brevity will be my operative tonight. Um, Jess, thanks very much. Uh, I think you've done a great job. The four companies we saw today, I found intriguing, really did. Uh, all of them had great appeal. The, the thank you very much. Um, I guess the one that appealed to me the most was the, uh, <laughs> this is embarrassing, but it was the shit one, uh, <laughs> namely diapers. Um, now when you take a look at, this is even more embarrassing, at my stage in life, unfortunately, I probably am interested in it from the incontinence standpoint as opposed to the child standpoint. But uh, it was a great, great presentation and uh, we thoroughly enjoyed it. In fact, our, one of my colleagues uh, who is here tonight spent quite a bit of time talking to the principal and I think has quite a bit of interest in it anyway. Um, why are we here? Well, I was talking to a couple of guys tonight who are obviously key angel investors. What is it? They said they asked if we did angel investing, and I did tell them about my experience. And I've had some success, but I think I've had more failure at it than success. But we came to the conclusion that but is it, there's a place for angel investing uh, in your portfolio, but it's not going to be your whole portfolio. You know, maybe 10% or maybe greater if you're more risk oriented but the bulk of your portfolio should be invested in a more conservative manner. The program that Sean and I run is one where it's really geared towards capital preservation and growth. Uh, we try to reduce the risk as much as we possibly can. Uh, we run about five mandates. We have alternatives in those mandates as well, but it's a very diversified program. Uh, the people that we have here today uh, from Polar who are going to toss, uh, they, they run two of the hedge funds that, that was we utilize. Um, they've been in business for 20 years, never had a down year, and uh, in light of all the volatility in the market that we've seen over the last 20 years, that's really quite a accomplishment. Uh, so I'm going to call them up here. Sean, did I miss anything? Okay. I, I'm going to get them to come up here and, uh, and do their presentation. Uh, Karen Arif from Polar, thanks very much. Thank you. Oh, shit. Do you want this? Yeah, we're just going to give you this mic. Well, so the video is really clear quality after that. Good afternoon, everybody. There are a variety of reasons to include. Oh, my getting your. Wait, the video will be excellent for those that aren't in the room. Okay, so okay, put this gonna, down no, or? that's for the room and this is for the video. Okay. We're, everyone's going to hear you. You're going to be amazing. All right. Thank you. Thank you. There's a variety of reasons to include hedge funds in a portfolio of otherwise traditional investments. The reason why investors choose to work with Polar is our ability to reduce risk and enhance diversification. Angels, thank you for having us. My name is Karen Maxwell-Smith, and I'm joined here with my, uh, my partner, Arif Hack. And Fred and Sean asked us to join the group today to share a bit about what we do at Polar Asset Management Partners. So um, we'll go into a bit about who Polar is, and we'll share two of the strategies that Fred and Sean have chosen to include in their portfolios. This is a disclaimer to say you can ignore everything that I'm saying. <laughs> so, okay, a bit about Polar. So, Polar was founded in 1991. Uh, we're a we're a multi-strategy organization with a focus on arbitrage-oriented investments that exhibit low risk and low correlation to risk assets. Uh, we have the longest track record in Canada in this arena. We manage about $4.2 billion on behalf of some of the largest and most recognized institutions, wealth managers, and individual investors in Canada, the US, and in Europe. Right now our company sits at about just over 60 employees. We have 27 investment professionals, 12 risk and program development officers. And 
and that's all headed up by our chief investment officer and our, uh, our founder, Paul Sabrin. Our firm was built, built on five core principles. I'll go through them quickly. Capital preservation. We're very thoughtful and careful about how we deploy capital. We're always looking for the best risk-adjusted returns. We really want to get paid for any risk that we take on within our portfolios. Volatility. We embrace volatility. In fact, we do our best work and thrive in some of the harshest market conditions. Strategy innovation. We scour the capital markets looking for new and innovative opportunities to enhance our portfolios and offer benefits for our investors. Transparency. We truly believe our investors are our partners. And in a true partnership, you need honesty, you need transparency. And we're known for being a very transparent company, particularly in a hedge fund industry where Many people think it's uh, very secretive. That's not full at all. Finally, institutional grade. Our firm, every corner of our firm, is built with the largest, most demanding investors in mind. And we've been able to satisfy the strongest, most demanding investors uh, throughout every corner of our business. So we're very proud of that. I'm going to start talking now about the multi-strategy fund. This fund has been around for 26 years. It is the longest running hedge fund in Canada. And this is our flagship fund. What makes this fund unique is capital can easily flow amongst specific strategies within a multi-strategy fund quickly and efficiently. Now our results have been pretty outstanding, but it's really how we achieve those results that we're most proud of. In general, how we structure the fund is we blend core strategies tend to be more liquid, more stable strategies with opportunistic strategies. Those are more directional in nature. Our core strategies, the gentleman before us talked about arbitrage. You'll hear arbitrage come up with a lot of the strategies where we're looking for price dislocations to take advantage of in the marketplace. That includes convertible arbitrage, fixed income arbitrage, risk arbitrage, as well as equity long short. That's more on the more liquid and stable side. On the more opportunistic side, more directional side, you'll see strategies like structured products arbitrage, structured credits, Canadian event driven, and certain strategies that we have uh, in production that we think is, is beneficial uh, in our strategy development bucket. Now all of this might not mean a whole lot to you if you're not in the hedge fund industry, and that's exactly why you would hire a team like Fred and Sean to uncover these opportunities for you. With that, I'm going to pass it over to my partner, Arif, here to talk about our long short strategy. Thank you, Karen. Everybody, thank you for coming out tonight. We appreciate you having us. Um, so I'll try not to bore you too much with, with some hedge fund lingo, but uh, I get the uh, opportunity to go through our, our long short fund. Uh, so as Karen mentioned, we are a multi-strategy organization. So been around 26 years, strategies come and go, we run about 10 strategies within our multi-strat fund. From time to time, uh, we see that fund as an incubator. So that little strategy development sleeve that Karen mentioned, we'll test out strategies. If it gets to a, a reasonable size, we'll carve that out uh, and have it as its own strategy within our uh, multi-strat attribution. Hence, the long short fund. Bill Peckford, who is the, uh, the lead portfolio manager and, uh, and the founder of this strategy at Polar, uh, he was employee number four in, uh, in 1995. So he started on our multi-strat fund. Uh, he came up with this idea of a long short in the Canadian space. Now, the Canadian space is primarily commodities, resources, and financials. How can you run a long short fund within a low ball nature if you are putting together relatively volatile sectors? So he wandered into the US space. So the uh, long short fund was carved out of the multi strat fund in 1997. Bill Peckford's been the lead portfolio manager uh, and a uh, very significant em employee at Polar since then. The fund is about $1.5 billion uh, in US assets. Uh, and has been through multiple market cycles. 
as Karen mentioned, 20 years of never losing money in any calendar year is quite successful for a, uh, a fund located in Canada. Relatively small capital markets landscape, uh, but we managed to live through multiple market cycles. Specifically, the fund is a US small to mid cap, long and short. So what does that mean? Well, we're looking at US securities. We're looking at the small to mid cap space where we can generate an outsized return and mitigate risk. So you could think of it as 100 names in a portfolio. We are long roughly 60 names on, uh, on one side in and around anywhere between 500 million to 10 billion in market cap. And we're short more S&P 500 names such that we don't get run over on shorts. So <coughs> the strategy utilizes a fundamental bottom-up approach when we're analyzing our securities. So we don't do any pairs trading, meaning we're not pairing off Google versus Facebook or one industry versus another stock in the same industry. We're fundamental stock pairs. So as we run through our fundamental analysis, we're putting in our 60 highest conviction longs versus 40 of our highest conviction shorts, X, any resources, commodities, or financials. We like to run fundamental analysis, as I mentioned. One of the key metrics is EV to revenue analysis. We like to strip down a balance sheet and financial statement and really look at margin analysis. And if you, if you ever get a chance to come into the office, which we, uh, we definitely appreciate people doing, there's wonderful artwork and uh, a nice trading floor. Um, if you get to sit down with Bill Peckford, our portfolio manager, he'll have a, he's very old school, he'll have a notebook next to his desk about this thick, and it's just EV to revenue charts. And mean reversion, he's looking at depressed margins uh, and really digs into uh, what a company can potentially do in terms of a turnaround story. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, we're looking at historical margins, margins of competitors, incremental margins, uh, margin goals, and we're really stripping down each one of these characteristics to identify whether or not a company is cheap or overvalued. Um, so here's our return profile. 20 years of never losing money. The Canadian hedge fund space has been relatively small. Uh, you know, if you were to ask me about any true hedge, duh, funds in the country, and I use D with, uh, you know, I, I really pronounce that. There's a lot of overly leveraged, uh, you know, oil and gas, uh, long, uh, tons of funds that you can get run over quite quickly. You can make outsized returns, but you don't get that same return profile that you're looking for in terms of diversification uh, in a portfolio. He's never lost money in 20 years. You will also notice, however, that there have been some early chunky years and uh, you know, the annualized number will say 19%. Uh, in a low vol environment, there will be times that you will be saying, well, why aren't you guys living up to the benchmark? Why aren't you outperforming? As Karen mentioned, we strive on volatility. We require volatility to be able to generate an outsized return profile. Our expectation for the fund today at the size that it is and the size of the firm, the pension assets, the foundation assets, and the fund to fund assets that we manage is between six and eight percent net of fees with about a third of the volatility of the equity markets. In 2008, when uh, the markets were down quite significantly, uh, the fund was up just over nine percent. We do have some recent volatility in 2016 in January and February. Uh, the S&P 500 and the Russell 2000 were down anywhere between 10 and 15 percent. This fund waited through that time period positively and then ended up putting together what we see as a very good 7% return. What I also have to describe is that it's a low net fund, meaning that we run, given the, the longs and the shorts combined, about 15% net long to the market. So if the market's up 25%, we're not gonna be up 25%. Our expectation is that we will be up 15 to 20% of that market. Because it's a stock picking exercise and it's high conviction longs versus high conviction shorts, we'd like to outperform that net exposure and we typically do that. So how do we mitigate risk? We mitigate risk by diversification, having 100 to 120 names in the portfolio. We have a broad overlay over the portfolio, meaning we're short 
ETFs or index options such that if the market takes a turn, we're covered and protected. And then the superior security and stock selection that allows us to generate those returns. So we, we talk a lot about mitigating risk, but some charts actually do the, the best illustration for us. So let's look at four different time periods. We have the dot-com bubble. Uh, the, the dark blue lines are, are our fund. Um, and you can see that you know, over the course of multiple time periods, whether it was the Great Recession uh, between 2008 and 2009, the dot-com bubble, recent China market turbulence, which happened in late 15, early 16, uh, and then the since inception number, you see when the large movements down in, uh, in the indexes or indices happen, the funds stay relatively stable. Capital preservation is key. If you're down 5% and your investors are rushing for the door, you're hitting the sell button on a lot of the securities that you have in the portfolio. You can't look at the market from a uh, high quality standpoint. You're being redeemed. You have to offer those redemptions and you have to sell some securities that may not be the attractive time to sell them at. We're always buyers in those markets. So when everybody is willing to liquidate their portfolios, pullers there with excess cash and excess margin to be able to pick up those securities such that we can capitalize on the bounce coming out of those returns. So the dot-com bubble, as you can see, significant down, drawdown in the markets, pull our way through that period positively. China market turbulence in, uh, in early 2016, exactly the same thing happened. So it's really reducing the volatility in your portfolio. Somebody like me who's risk averse, I'd rather 6% a year than up 40, down 20, up 15, up five, down 30. I get to the same place, I manage my own statement volatility, and I compound my money slowly and carefully. That's all we have for you. Appreciate your time.